no problem. Religious. So you want to speak? Yeah, so this is the second, this is a new conversation. Cyrus yeah. doesn't believe in God. Do you believe in God? <laughs> yes, maybe not in a conventional, conventional sense. Like not monotheist? Um, if I were to believe in God, I would, I'd probably lean towards monotheism. So you're not fully convinced yet? No, but I'd like to discuss this claim you've made about Isaiah 42. Yeah. And kind of... It mentions Kedar. You, you're not you're not an Arab, right? No. Okay, so you said it talks about your ancestors. No, I think that it's a prophecy about Cyrus the Great. It's not. So we can we can compare notes. Because you... because because Cyrus the Great was not a prophet. Where where in the passage does it mention a prophet? Uh, it, it mentions the messenger of God near the end. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Cyrus the Great was a great king, no doubt. Okay, in in fact we have some weak reports. Uh, prophet Muhammad is claimed to have said that uh, Dhulkarnain, Dhulkarnain, mm -hmm. he built the city of Marv. Right. The city of Marv, which That's is in like Persia, close, yeah, which is in Iran. Border between modern yeah, Iran and yeah, yeah, uh, Afghanistan. Yeah. And Marv was established by Cyrus. Right. We know historically. You're saying the, the Prophet of Islam spoke about that specifically? No, he didn't mention location. Cyrus specifically. That location specifically. People claim that Cyrus was Dhulkarnain. Right, I've heard. I've heard so, yeah. the, so the king mentioned in the Quran, the one uh, Dhulkarnain, the one with two powers, or the one with two lands, or the one, literally speaking, the one with two horns. Right, right. And horns signify something, uh, something more bigger than horns okay this is these are not horns like physical horns like he he would have horns on his head rather these horns uh, are i i believe metaphorical references to something bigger okay okay so 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 there are some who claim that cyrus yeah. was Dulkarnain. but before we digress i'd like to discuss more your claims about isaiah 42. yeah so to what degree have you judged your claim versus the wider text of Isaiah, because I think it's important, for example, that's a good, that's a good I'm question, sure, yeah. like, I, I've, you know, I, I've experienced that uh, Muslims get frustrated by people taking their own scripture out, out of context, context right? absolutely. So I think it's important to... Are we doing this. that? Uh, are we doing that to this uh, I think passage? Be, I think it would okay. be fruitful yeah. to do so. Okay, that's a very good question. Maybe if I just list the, the priorities. Yeah, so, there's so this. Let, let me address this very quickly. It's a very short answer. Sure, sure, sure. The book of Isaiah in particular yeah. is patchwork. All modern scholars, mm. even traditional Jewish scholars will acknowledge this, mm -hmm. that the book of Isaiah in its current form, yeah. as we have it today, yeah. or the, the oldest manuscripts of it, yeah. uh, in, 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 the, in the current form, yeah. they are patchwork. They are anecdotal. So, so you will have one chapter jumbled up with another chapter jumbled up with another chapter somewhere uh, and both chapters are they're not even relevant to each other my, my and that happened with ancient documents with ancient scriptures that happened very often my but, understanding about yeah. the construction of the book of isaiah is, is a um, less of a patchwork but so I don't know if you're familiar with the idea of proto Isaiah, yeah, Isaiah, Deutero Isaiah, yes, I am, I am, I am familiar. Yeah. So, so one to 30, 39, thirty-nine is yeah. Forty to forty to fifty, yeah, yeah. And then the remainder, yeah. Perhaps Some say there was a third Isaiah as well. Yeah. So when you yeah. say uh, a prophet, uh, uh, Isaiah so let, let's speaking. quickly explain for the viewers what we are talking about. Yeah. These are very technical terms. Yeah. So. What the brother here is saying that Isaiah, according to modern scholarship, uh, is uh, is basically um, a combination of uh, fragments or let's say, um, um, how can I put it? Like, uh, 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 perhaps even a common school of thought, yeah. writing at different times, yeah. but then collated exactly. as if to appear to have yeah. been written by... By, a, a by one author or it's, it's a uniform text, which yeah. it is not. It right. is not a uniform text. Right. So it has it has been put into sections by scholars. Yeah. First Isaiah is from chapter 1 to 39. Yeah. And 39 to 55, uh, if I remember correctly, is Deutero Isaiah, which means yeah. the second Isaiah. Correct. And then the remaining part is basically, some scholars say, is the third Isaiah. Well, when you were speaking to the, yeah. the yeah. Jewish gentleman, yeah. you were saying a prophet speaking in 800 BC, yeah. you were referring to Isaiah. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's been written at different times, according yeah. to the linguistic analysis, yeah. Yeah. what what era would you put Isaiah 42? I believe it's early. I, I have two reasons for that. One is my religious bias. Right. 
my complete religious bias, my inclination that Isaiah 42 in particular definitely is early because of uh, the fact that it, 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 it correlates with the Quran. Okay, because the Quran claims, uh, in fact, even the Hadith uh, claims that these were the characteristics mentioned in the previous scriptures of an Arabian prophet. Okay, and if that's the case, then uh, the book is attributed to a, 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 an Israelite prophet. So I believe it is definitely ancient. It may have come from. Yeah, 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 me. yeah, okay, yeah. You can show me where yeah. this specific reference to a prophet specifically is. In Isaiah yeah. 42. In Isaiah 42, you said. Yeah, is a, is a messenger of God. Yeah, yeah. If you take it out, is that... Uh, which... Uh, that's the beginning of it. Okay, if you go down, verse 8. In addition to kind of trying to... Like you said, I, I thank you for admitting that you have maybe some biases in terms of dating second... Uh, second yeah, like, uh, and, and, uh, and I can qualify them. I can qualify them scholarly, uh, with scholarly uh, support. I can also so I, give I, some... Yeah. some op some scholarly yeah uh, who is thinking. blind but my servant or deaf like the messenger i am sending isaiah 42 okay. verse 19 verse 19 okay so is, is this is a messenger who is being sent by god so the whole chapter is kind of so, i believe the chapter is uniform okay. the chapter is uniform also... within itself it's a, it's a it's a complete prophecy about one individual okay because some people will break this passage down into at least two sections so i think it's from 10 onwards they will say this is a break from one to nine i, I they will they will it's a it's, it's how how are they gonna how how are they going to qualify that okay we, it's we, a good we, point we, yeah, you're, you're, yeah yeah um so once we establish the timing of the of these passages i.e when in history they were written I think it would be important then to look at the political landscape of the time. So, for example, what major political changes were occurring in that time? Because I see this as part of a larger work of propaganda. This is just before the Babylonian uh, invasion. Okay, so I put it quite a bit later than that. So, no, I would, I would argue the current this... text is later. It's post-exilic. Right. The current text of the Old Testament yeah. was put together, as we know it, after the Babylonian exile, after the Jewish people came back to the, the city of Jerusalem, right. when Cyrus allowed them to go back. Right. This is when, the current, as we know the, the, the Old Testament today, this is when it was put together. Okay? The, 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 the pre-exile text is not known to us. But it's completely you're lost. That this part of Isaiah, Isaiah 42, is a, is a pre exile uh, text. Pre exile text. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But the rabbis and the sages and uh, and prophets and prophets, Israel, I, I believe Israel, yeah. okay, he, 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 yeah, Israel came back and he put it together. So uh, we, we actually accept Israel as a prophet of God. He's mentioned in the right, Quran, right. Hosea. Okay, right. Prophet Hosea. Some yeah. people yeah. consider him the, se the second Moses. Because of, because of this. That he's the one who because of putting back. down the scripture again. Bringing the scripture, scripture it's, back. It's yeah. interesting when I say that Ezra is also part of this uh, important part of the same story. Because Ezra was a Persian governor. He was employed by the Persian king and he was sent back to Judea under, by the command of the Persian king. To how, go and teach how, the Lord. how do we know that? It's written in the text. In, in like the, the Persian king instructed him to go and teach. But how do we know he was a Persian? No, as in he was he was an employee of the Persians. Yeah, so he was yeah. an Israelite. Not that he was necessarily a Persian yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I that's less heavily influenced by Persian thinking. So, so let's assume he was an Israelite because yeah, I I yeah, don't see uh, no, 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 how how no, could a Persian no, 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 put claiming. down the Jewish scripture? I mean, yeah, in yeah. a legal sense. Yeah, he was a Persian. He yeah, was yeah, that's possible. As a, as like Joseph, Joseph was working for the king of Egypt. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. If I was to convince you, for example, that this part of uh, the book of Isaiah was written with knowledge as in contemporary to Cyrus, not 800... You, you're saying it reflects uh, the circumstances of the time? Literally what was happening it's influenced, on the at that time. So what's, what we find in Isaiah 42 or the book of Isaiah in general? Um, Deutero the, Isaiah, specifically. I agree with you, okay. 100%. This is why scholars have those views. But Isaiah 42 specifically, you will you will have to argue very hard. You will have to work very hard so to I'll, prove for, that. For example, I will have to demonstrate a connection between Cyrus and Kedar. Okay. That was would that satisfy you? Okay. Okay. No problem. 
on, a, on another. If anything, that might prove my point. It yes. may make my point even stronger. Okay. okay. We'll see. So we'll, 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 we'll look into the strengths of my argument. Okay. Okay. Before I go into that, yeah. I would say, did uh, the Prophet of Islam ever refer to Kedar specifically? Yes. So did he ever speak to someone he described as a Kedarite? Uh, no. He. What we do have, we have his genealogy in the sources going okay. back directly to Kedar. Kedar was the second son of Ishmael according to the book of Genesis chapter 25 verse 13. These are the sons of Ishmael. Nebajoth the firstborn, Kedar the secondborn. Okay. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. did the, if I, I think I heard you say it once, yeah. but please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Did yeah. the Prophet of Islam himself say, do not explore my genealogy beyond uh, Adnan. Adnan? Correct. Correct. So, he said that. So but what, but what that but but Having, yeah, that's a very good point. Don't go beyond Adnan. Which is far later than Kedar. Right? Yeah, right. which is in the middle, somewhere okay. in the middle, actually quite late. So on okay. what basis do you we further back? The basis is uh, an authentic hadith that the Prophet himself said, I am a son of Ishmael. Okay. I am a son of Ishmael. So we have we have the Prophet telling us, don't is go... He abrogating his own... No, no, he's not, he's not. <laughs> okay. he's, he's confirming right. that he is a direct descendant of Abraham okay. through Ishmael. Okay. That's what he's confirming in an authentic hadith from the Prophet. We have an authentic hadith from the Prophet where he said categorically, I am an Ishmaelite, I am a son of Ishmael. Okay. Because the hadith goes as follows, that Allah chose me from Quraysh and Quraysh was chosen from Kenana. Kenana was chosen from, uh, uh, the list goes, and, and, and Ismail was chosen. Uh, uh, so, so, so this hadith is authentic, by the way. So he traces his lineage back to Ismail now through Adnan. But whether he comes from the, the children of Nabajoth or Kedar is contested. I, I'll give you that much. Nebajoth, you mean, uh, so the first born. The yeah, okay. the first born or the second born. I see, I see. We we don't have any authentic sources with us yeah, just repeat what that, you, that you, what you said a moment ago. We, we, we don't know whether it was Nebajoth or or, or Kedar. That's what I'm, I'm oh, trying see, to I'm going to emphasize the point even with with, with a lot more strength. But when you, we when don't you have any Kedar authentic sources. In, the, yeah. in Isaiah 42, you mm. say unequivocally that this is a sign of, of uh, the coming of and our this is why I believe no I do no this is Nebuchadnezzar. why I I mean look I'm speaking in very specific terms yeah. we don't have any authentic hadith okay. from the Prophet that tells us that he is a direct descendant uh, of Ishmael via Kedar okay. we don't have any authentic hadith okay. we do have authentic reports from the Prophet where he said I am a son of Ishmael a direct descendant of Ishmael okay well okay. Through which son is the question? Is it Nebojoth or Kedar? He didn't say. It, wait, let, let, me, let, me, let me let me stop okay, now. Sure. Let me let me let me finish. Sorry, let me finish. Sure. He didn't say which son. Mm. But why do I claim that it's Kedar? Yeah. Okay, I put uh, the puzzle together. Okay, I I, I joined the blocks. Right. For example, the Quran claims, which is authentic to all Muslims, that he's mentioned in the scriptures. Mm. When we go and look. He specifically mentioned uh, an Arabian prophet is mentioned with those characteristics he came with. He was very powerful. So he put idol worshippers to shame. Say that he is mentioned in the previous scriptures. Right? Yes. Does, yes. Does it, does it specify which previous scriptures? No. It says the the books of the Israelites. Okay. The people of the book. Not the Torah. It mentions the word Torah, but the term Torah in in the Quran is used in a loose sense. The book, the Torah basically means the so scriptures, not, the five not, books. not, ne five, five books came recently. The, the, who divided the five books is the question. So Moses didn't give, let me, Moses, let me Moses did not give these names to these five books. So not necessarily in the word, not necessarily in the scripture given the, by Moses. No, okay. not, necessarily. not necessarily. No, it is there. Okay. Necessarily that's true. Okay. But not necessarily confined to those exclusively okay. to the, the scripture of Moses. Okay. okay. Uh, because this can be extended because other later prophets are directly linked to Moses and the message of Moses. So they're also in that sense part of the Mosaic law because they're following the same law and they're following the same tradition. So they are followers of Moses upholding the same law and whatever revelation they bring is, if anything, a commentary on the Torah. It's, it's an extension on the Torah, explaining the Torah for, 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 the, for the current day and age. We can okay. argue as to whether Isaiah, yeah. for example... So, so let me very quickly... Let me, I'm, I'm in the middle of a conversation. Yeah, one second. Okay. 
Sorry. History, history. Yes. No, 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 yes. No, 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 don't disturb them. Bro. Let him finish this conversation. No, Just ask him why they have I don't know why he's scared. So go, go on. Sorry. We'll get to that. We're talking about that roughly anyway. Your open Satanism. I said, why? Because the link between Islam and the moon and the star. I said, Islam has nothing to do with the moon. Okay. Why are you wasting your time with him? You know what? Someone's unplugged my microphone. Why did they do that? Someone has unplugged my microphone. Okay. Why are you so against me, bro? <laughs> what did I do to you? Why do you think uh, you shouldn't waste your time with me? <laughs> Don't waste your time with people who talk like that. Why? Huh? I'm asking a genuine question. Moon and, moon, the moon and the star is a Persian symbol okay. that has nothing to do with Islam. Thank you. It has nothing. Uh, tell him to bring out sources. No, no, no. Tell him, tell him to bring something from the Quran and Sunnah and he will run away. He will disappear. Don't worry. That's, a, that's, okay. quite, that's quite okay. an unfortunate thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mic. Anyway, well, if, if, you, if you want to take audio from one of these... Uh, that's very really kind of you. I, okay, might, I might have to do that just yeah, to fill yeah, the gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. If you want. Sorry that you're getting I've decided not to put my hood on. No, no, no. No, no, no problem. Don't worry. You can. You can. So, I'm going to have to very quickly rush out because I haven't prayed my asa. I don't want to keep you from that. But I think it would be an excellent conversation to be able to go Continue. into this in more, yeah. in more detail maybe in, in yeah, we can we can we can quickly summarize it now okay, if you so, want. So so I'm saying that the fact that the Quran refers to the, the Jewish scriptures yeah, yeah. okay as a whole. Even even if we were to specifically confine ourselves to let's say the five books because the yeah. Quran doesn't acknowledge the number five. Right. Moses never gave number five. Moses never gave those names to those books. Yeah. Moses gave a law. But you, you and, 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 and we later... can we can show we, we can we can show with solid evidence that that a lot of that law was actually borrowed from the Hammurabi, uh, yeah. the Code of Hammurabi. Yeah, okay, yeah. so that's not the Mosaic law entirely. We don't said... believe we don't believe the the Israelite law as it's found in Pentateuch uh -huh. in the five books today is all from Moses. We don't believe that. Right. Okay, Where we believe it's been mixed refer, with mixed with local codes, local laws. Death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, not even that. Uh, that's that's a very minor point. Okay, okay. I mean we can show yeah. with firm evidence that a lot of the law uh, in fact that law specifically speaking about a, a bull goading uh, a man uh -huh. and what is the punishment for the bull or for the for the owner of the bull okay that code was taken directly from the code of Hammurabi right, that right. particular law right, that right. The, the, that uh, the, basically those passages let's, let's bring so, it back to, to Isaiah 42 yeah so you, you, you admitted please again correct me if I'm misquoting you you said that we can confirm the Prophet of Islam's lineage back to Ismail, yeah, but yeah. we don't know if it's ne through Nebaioth or Kedar, which son yeah. it is. How, and why, do, why, do, I, why, why is the question? You, is it because, in a, and I, let, let me maybe just preempt you, because in a previous uh, use of the word Kedar, it's used to describe, uh, to encompass all Arabs. Not necessarily, okay. not necessarily. I'll explain very quickly. Why do I use Kedar? What basis do I have for that? The basis I have is again a hadith which doesn't mention Kaidar, but it is a companion of the Prophet Abdullah bin Amr bin As. He was asked by people, where do we find the description of the Prophet of Islam in the Jewish scriptures? Mm -hmm. And he reads characteristics. Mm -hmm. He states that such and such and such a characteristic is mentioned in the Jewish. And when we match them with Isaiah 42, some of them uh, meet word by word, right. they match word by word. So now I am basically making this extension that he was uh, told by either by the Prophet or one of the Jewish rabbis in Medina who accepted Islam that these are the passages that refer, and he accepted it. Potentially this topic was discussed in front of the Prophet. He accepted it because he, he didn't have the authority to put something forward from his own uh, mind. And if that's the case, then it's it's directly linked to Isaiah 42, and that means Kedar is the person being referred to here. So so even Prophet indirectly or his companions indirectly confirm yeah. the the validity of yeah, Kedar as one of the ancestors of the Prophet. We're gonna have to rush. Because we, no so, so it was it was my pleasure. We will continue another time, another time. Okay, we'll continue from here. Right, but look into these things I mentioned. Huh?